Live from our Jackson studio. Uh, <laughs> live from the Midtown Jackson studio and live from well in to deep 13. This is Last Call Cafe on Spreaker with the animalistic Jay the Brain Man, the animalistic Matthew the Wizard Nichols, and the pause for consideration, Steve, the Baxman Baxley. I'm Franklin Pangborn, your announcer, with Morgul as the friendly drone. Let's go to the cafe and find out what's going on and join the guys on a whole crowd. It's Lost Call Cafe on Spreaker! Welcome, welcome, one and all to the Corsican Ball. And welcome to another edition of the only show that is unrehearsed, unscripted, uncolored, untainted, unsullied, and unforgettable. That's right, this is the Last Call Cafe on Spreaker. Steve the Baxman Baxley here, along with, and I will introduce them with rapid fire secession. He is the intergender wrestling champion of the world, still undefeated and still unchallenged. He is also, ladies and gentlemen, the host of Jada Brain Man presents Wrestling MA Hut, starring Jada Brain Man and Steve the Baxman Baxley Sunday nights at 11 30, right after this very show here on Spreaker. He's the manager of champions, the manager of stars, and Betty White's favorite chew toy, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only. Wow, that was nice. And this man, next to Jay and next to me and next to all of your hearts, makes gamers happy because he's got some gamer news, which is why his segment's called Gamer News. Ladies and gentlemen, the gamer's best friend... <laughs> Matthew the Wizard Nichols! What's up, everyone? That's right, this is the only show that enters your brain waves and turns your brain into a B and B air into an Airbnb where you have to have reservations. And believe me, we all have reservations. Anyway, folks, speaking of reservations, it's time to warm your mind with another heartwarming brainwave from the brain. Jay, the brain, man, what is on your wondrous mind as we go for the applause? Uh, I got nothing. You got nothing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is another brainwave for you to enjoy and seek confinement for. That's right. All right. Thank you, Jay. It is now time for our announcer, uh, Franklin Payne Board, who you just heard on the intro. He's on vacation. 
No, actually, Harry is on vacation on the TV side, so Franklin doing double duty. Because of it, Franklin's here. Yes, I am here. I'm the one with the mustache. Yes, I know that. Well, you know, I'm the mustache, six foot eight. Got a little goatee. You know me. Yes, we all know you. We respect you. You got an intro to me. Okay, I'll do it. Time now for Gamer News. Brought to you by the folks at Pluto TV. It's free. It's Pluto TV with channels for gamers and anime fans as well. It's Pluto TV. Pluto.tv. It's free. And now, with the gamer news and everything else, here's the wizard, Matthew Nichols. Thank you. Well, this week on Gamer News, we had a Nintendo Direct, and we got a swarm of announcements for this week. A swarm? Yep. From this Nintendo Direct. All right. First off, it started out with the next fighter in Smash, which are Pyra and Mithra from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They are the next fighters for Smash Brothers Ultimate. Be coming up in March. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout is making its debut on Nintendo Switch this summer. We also got the Sci-Fi Sim, The Outer Worlds. And we got two cult classics that will arrive on May 14th in Famicom Detective Club, The Missing Heir, and Famicom Detective Club, The Girl Who Stands Behind. We also got Samurai Warriors 5 coming to Switch. Which was followed up by the announcement of an optimized version of the cult classic, Legend of Mana will debut on Switch on June 24th. Also, we got a new trailer for Monster Hunter Rise, which is the latest entry in Capcom's firing combat system, will debut for Switch on March 26th. We also got a new Mario Golf game, which is the first time in... I think since the 64 or the GameCube era. I don't remember when the last Mario Golf game is. Anyway, Mario Golf Super Rush will debut on June 25th. Next we got... If you remember, if you OG Xbox fans remember Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without Pulse, it is coming to Nintendo Switch in March, along with Tales from the Borderlands, which is Telltale's adventure game taking place in the world of, in the Borderlands universe, taking place between the events of Borderlands 2 and 3, Capcom Arcade Stadium Collection is out now, and you can download it for free, and the And one of the games that's free is Ghosts and Goblins, the arcade version. Next, we had a new trailer for No More Heroes 3, which will be available on August 27th. Next, we got a licensed game, which is DC Superhero Girls Teen Power, which is an action sim game starring its titular characters. And also, we had Plant vs. Zombies Battle for the Neighborville Complete Edition, which is also stated for this year. Next, uh, if you guys remember on the 3DS, the special little RPG game, Metopia. Well, it's coming to Nintendo Switch this May. And also, for those who play Animal Crossing, the Super Mario update is coming to Animal Crossing, and there's going to be a... Be a variety of Mario themed accessories that will be out later this month. Next, Nintendo pretty much showed off <laughs> okay, from the creators of Project Auto, of Autopath Traveler and Bravely Default comes the deep tactical JRPG called Project Triangle Strategy, which is its working title. And you can download the demo right now, and the game will come out next year. 
Also, we got a new free-to-play Star Wars game called Star Wars Hunters, which will t- which takes place between episodes four, I mean, six and seven. And that's all we know about so far. There's also a competitive multiplayer game called Knockout City, which combines a bunch of desperate character designs in a, and pits them to each other against in a extreme sports game. Next, we have a game called World's End Club, which is an adventure game that casts you as a variety of characters in a weird post-apocalyptic version of Japan. It's from the team behind Dongaroba. Next, we have the clearly the the acclaimed 2020 Game of the Year recep- Hades will get a physical release complete with a soundtrack. Next, we have Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, which combines three of the most recent Ninja Gaiden games in a single package. It will come out this summer. Next, we have we have the expansion pass for Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. Age of Calamity. Sorry. <laughs> we uh, Cala- ca- calam Calamia, ain't, ain't, ain't that a social disease? Cal- <laughs> Cal- Calamity, that's what I meant. Calamia, ain't that, 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 that a social disease thing? <laughs> yeah, all right. Why, anyway. Jethro? All right. The purchase bonus available May 28th, 2021. Newly added weapon for Link and costume. Wave 1 will come out June 21st, which with an expanded roster, newly added weapon types, new challenges in the Royal Ancient Lab, newly added challenging enemies for Wave 2, which is coming out November 2021, new character vigilance, newly added stages, expanded roster, new battle skills for existing characters, and its expansion pass is going to be 19.99. All right, and we got. We have a bunch of Rebus Fire Succession, which includes Brevely Default 2, which is coming out this week, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrected, Saga Frontier, and more Apex Legends content. And also, we had a big announcement. As some of you Zelda fans may know, this year marks the 20, I mean, the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. And we got our first new Zelda game that's coming out, which is an HD remake of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which came out on the Wii back in 2011. And guess what? We can actually, we can actually use the buttons for the entire game. We don't need to use motion controls because the sword swings are on the right analog stick. So, you know, the sword swings that you do with the Wii remote, you can do that with the, with the joystick. And there will also be Legend of, <coughs> Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Edition Joy-Cons, which will be out on July 16th. And the final game announcement was Splatoon 3, which is coming out in 2022. And that is it for this week's Gamer News, and hopefully we'll have some more announcements coming up in the following months, since it's Zelda's 35th anniversary this year. Hopefully we'll see more announcements. Yeah, Zelda doesn't, doesn't look a uh, day over 20. Yep. Hopefully, we might get an HD collection with when we go HD, Twilight Princess HD from the Wii U, and possibly Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask remakes on the Switch. Maybe be a uh, Link's Awaken in remake style for the Orgo games. Because Breath of the Wild 2 is still in development, as A.G. Al Numa pretty much stated, he's not, they're not ready to show off anything for the, for the upcoming Zelda game. Which is why he showed off the Skyward Sword HD collection. Yep. Sounds devious. <laughs> yep. 
That's pretty much it for this week's Gamer News. And much Gamer News with Matthew the Wizard Nichols. I'm Franklin Pangborn. Baxman Brain Wizard, it's all you and I'll see one of you at midnight. Okay, thank you very much. Got a little uh, very weird uh, news item. This is from The Guardian of the United Kingdom. A wanted man handed himself into police in West Sussex to avoid having to spend... Oh, this... You're going to love the excuse. Um, he uh, handed himself in to police in West Sussex to avoid having to spend any more time in lockdown with the people he lives with. The man, whose identity was not disclosed, presented himself voluntarily to Sussex police on Wednesday afternoon, reportedly in the hope of getting some, quote, peace and quiet, end quote. Police said the man, who was wanted on recall to prison, handed himself into Burgess Hill Police Station, was in custody and heading back to jail. Psychologists are reporting a rise in people experiencing symptoms of sustained dress similar to burnout at work, including problems with sleep and concentration. And many people are desperate for human contact after months of relative or total isolation. Boy, do I know how they feel. Uh, going back to prison appears to have been more appealing to this man than being cooped up with certain others. Inspector Darren Taylor of Sussex Police wrote on Twitter, quote, uh, Peace and quiet. Wanted, ma- wanted male handed himself into the team yesterday afternoon. After informing us, he would rather go back to prison than have to spend more time with the people he was living with. One in custody and heading back to prison to serve some further time on his own, end quote. A wide range of studies have found that the pandemic has taken a toll on relationships with family and friends. Research from the University of Oxford found that levels of stress, depression, and anxiety among parents and and carriers had increased with the pressures of the lockdown. Couples have also felt the strain. In April last year, almost a quarter of couples, 23%, say that uh, they were struggling with their relationships, according to research by the relationship support charity Relate. And figures released in July show that lockdown had made 8% of people realize they need to end their relationship, rising to 15% for those aged between 25 and 34 Divorce inquiry soared by 300% last year as the coronavirus lockdown led to many to consider their relationships. According to the co-op, and lawyers were inundated with inquiries from divorced parents arguing about where their children should stay during lockdown, with some seeking a prison sentence for their former partners for breaking custody agreements. Yow! All that because people just, I mean, they they want to be together. What do you guys uh, think? You think, uh, I mean, what what are your opinions on all this? I don't know. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Got one more thing before we uh, hand things over to Les around. Ah, here we are. Here we go. Yes, friends, we can find it anywhere. We can find them in bricks. Find them in human beings. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have another place where people can hide things. And things that are illegal, I should say. Yes, friends. I I speak of I speak of the drugs, the marijuana, the ganza, the the cocaine, you know, the fun stuff. Well, this is unusual, but we shall speak it. On February 13th, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers, officers in Cincinnati said they intercepted a shipment of cocaine coated cornflakes. You heard right, cocaine. Oh, I wish there's a bell. Cocaine coated cornflakes. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
There we go. Uh, I knew I got the wrong flavor. (laughs) Yes, friends. Uh, it, It originated from South America. The shipment was sent from Peru and destined for a private residence in Hong Kong. The shipment was detected by a drug-sniffing dog. Upon closer inspection, officials noticed white powder and a grayish substance coating the cereal's flakes. Officers tested the flakes and powder and found they contained cocaine. Cocaine is a Schedule II substance under the U.S. Controlled Substances Act. Cincinnati Port Director Richard Gillespie said the smugglers will hide narcotics in anything imaginable. I tend to agree with that. Quote, The men within it, the part of Cincinnati, are committed to stopping the flow of dangerous drugs, and they continue to use their training, intuition, and strategic skills to prevent these kind of illegitimate shipments from reaching the public. Meanwhile, oh, I mean, end quote, CBP conducts operations at ports of entry throughout the U.S. and regularly screens arriving international passengers and cargo for narcotics, weapons, and other restricted or prohibited products. CBP strives to serve as premier law enforcement agency, enhancing the nation's safety and prosperity through collaboration, innovation, and interrogation. On a typical day in fiscal year of last, 2020, CPB, CBP seized 3,677 pounds of drugs at ports of entry across the nation. Co- cocaine coated, coated cornflakes. No wonder Tony keeps saying, they're great! Oh, wow, man, they bitching are. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Jay, uh, would you would you like to see more about this? I mean, my gosh, what's <laughs> next? Well, I mean, what's what's next? I mean, they put them in uh, cocaine coated corn coated corn flakes. I mean, what more? Uh, cocaine flavored Fruit Loops. <laughs> Follow your nose; it only shows. Hey, man. Oh, wow. I see Lucky Charms, man. Bitchin'. Anyway. Alrighty. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Pangborn to do his little speech of fire. Yes, it is time to bring the, uh, bring the baddies to justice. To help bring the rotten to their knees. Yes, friends, it's time for the insidious pouch of the week. Presented by Hillwad. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Jimmy. Oh, that's all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your here's your segment. Big Jimmy, Billy Bobbo, Schwartz, Morton General, and Lieutenant Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. At ease. Smoke them if you got them. Eat them if you bake them. How you doing, man? Brain, how you doing? Good. By the way, you all can just, you know, at ease when I show up. I may be a general, but I am a human being. Yeah, barely. What's that? I mean, yes, sir. You know, he hasn't been the same since that incident, New Year's Eve. Oh, that's right. Well, chill out, man. Um, Wizard, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, General. Baxman, how are you doing? I'm doing it. Did I understand you got some red flannels? Yes, sir, I do. I hope you are not planning to do what I think you're doing. Yes, I am. On uh, my sports cast uh, at midnight 05, I am going to wear my red flannels. YouTube has just destroyed you, hasn't it, Baxman? No, I, I'm going to do it. I'll have something underneath just in case. Well, you better. 
Anyways. Uh, uh, excuse me, General. Can I do it this time? Why, Jimmy, look, Lieutenant, yes, you may. By the way, how's that brother of yours? How's how's that other Jimmy doing? Well, he's he's right here. One way, why don't you ask him? Jimmy, how you doing, son? I'm doing pretty well, General. Has your brother been uh, treating you well? Yes, he has. Last night, he took me out to Wendy's and we had a feast with two triple cheeseburgers, large soda, and fries. That's right, mm. and, uh, and I will say this, he uh, taught me one thing to do with them fries. He did? What was it? Well, you know the Frosties I usually love? Oh, if you dunk them in with the fry, if you dunk fries in with them, oh, it is a heavenly taste. I never tried that. Well, you gotta get out more first, General. Oh, all right, I will try that. I will join you guys next time you have a little, uh, a, a little meeting of the minds. Well, how's uh, Wednesday for you? Wednesday's good. Wednesday's good. What time? Uh, about uh, two o'clock. Yeah, okay, I will be there. Good, you're paying. I get you. I think next New Year's Eve, Jimmy's going to take the night off. It is time we do something right for a change, which would be an impossibility. But I'm going to give the belch this week to NHL Commissioner... Gary Bettman for his well, I'm going to say ill-planned um, scheduling since they couldn't do the winter, the winter game or whatever they call it on New Year's Day. They decided to do the outdoor game at Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Now we all know when you do an outdoor, when you have outdoor hockey, you need a solid rink they decided to put the... I mean, baseball stadiums, you can do that. You can do that at football stadiums. I remember Beck's man, that big game, uh, big chill in the big house. But at a golf course, that is a danger. And Mr. Bettman should have known it because they had to uh, do one hell of a lengthy first intermission on Saturday... And then they had to move the schedule around so they can get all the games going because the ice started to melt. Players and officials started to fall. And the puck started to do some strange things. Uh, maybe that puck was uh, one of those old Fox NHL pucks. You know the blue ones? I'm worried about you, boy. I know, but you're still paying for lunch. you have you got him loaded? <laughs> yes, sir, I've got him loaded. All right, then. Mr. Batman. I'd rather say this is your Stanley Cup uh, trophy. Let's hope you enjoy it. When ready, fire! Uh. Ooh, I bet that's going good. Boy, why is your hair all messed up? Oh, boy. What did you give him? Well, what I normally give him. What? Soda. Uh, so, uh, look, yeah, soda. Uh, some vodka. Uh, some seltzer from Budweiser and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, his very own uh, $5 Chalupa box. You didn't. Yes, sir. He gave me a list of what he wanted in the Chalupa box from Taco Bell. I got it, gave it to him. That's why there's a little extra corn on Gary Bettman's head. Steve. Uh, Pat Pangborn. Yes, sir. In the segment, I'm going to have a talk with Jimmy. Uh, sir, uh, uh, I don't like the look on your face. 
You won't like the look. I'll give you afterwards, boy. Run! Run, you coward! See you all next week! All right, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry I stepped in your line. And that's the Insidious Bunch of the Week. Sponsored by nobody! Okay, guys, final words, final comments, final yodels. Marine, any final thought? Nope. Wizard? Happy 30th... Happy 35th anniversary, Legend of Zelda. Ah, yes. I love that game. Okay, that is going to wrap things up for us next week. Who knows what we're going to have because we're unpredictable. And we plan to stay that way. So for the brain, the wizard, I am the Baxman. This has been a presentation of Mystifying Creativity Productions in association with Brain Scan Wizardry Entertainment. Boy, these two have their own production company. They're popular. And, of course, Spreaker.com. Thank you all very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Till then, bye-bye.